This man is the most. Hello, hello everyone. Today while I was at work, my phone blew up with notifications. There was a raging conversation in the international pub. I invite you to join the link is in the description. What has happened when I went and checked? After this regular maintenance, Ankama has announced some changes. And not just one. Look at the bloody list. There's so many things that changed. So I've decided to make a video about it because, and guess what? They've published it from today, but only in French. So you don't get to know what the changes are in any other language. So let's get to it straight away. First things first, during the last update, the paddocks, underground paddocks, have been completely locked. So people who breathe were unable to access their mounts and everything that was on them until they corrected it and they've promised they would do it this update and they have done it so that is all sorted there you go breeders you can rejoice now the second one is in the middle of fights there were a couple of things that were a bit bugged or shady the first one is when you had two challenges when you had the choice between two challenges and you've picked one the second one will change in the next fight now they save them correctly so that they replicate them the fight afterwards. This is what I think has happened with this one, but that remains to be confirmed. The second one is every time you have a candy or an alteration of any kind that changes your statistics, your stats. Whenever you started a challenge with a character that would reduce the maximum uses by one, which was senseless. It didn't make any sense because it was just a normal challenge. It was not a fight where you could get to stand anything. Now that has been eradicated. Challenges no longer reduce the duration effect of alteration or stats change in candies or whatever. Colosseum. The winners from the previous seasons now have their statues at the Colosseum Arena. Let's have a quick look at them. The winners from the previous seasons now have their statues updated. Tough luck to the previous one. And good luck to the ones that are doing it and competing this current season. Next one is the quest, the elemental one, where you can get the deluxe amulet has been bugged for some time. In the step where you had to have two people with cords in order to go up from a map all the way down to access the rest of the maps in order to continue with your quest. Now, that has been simplified much to the joy and rejoicing of uh, mono account players you don't need two people anymore go up the hill double click the court and boom you carry on with your quest one change in the monster category eternal conflict i know this won't affect many people but here we go we have to talk about it because it's mentioned here so whenever you phased eternal conflict there was a chance of summoning the nightmare now that chance has been increased to a hundred percent so every time you phase him there will be a nightmare in the map however there is no secondary effect to the nightmare being summoned in that it used to make eternal conflict invulnerable that has gone away the fight is slightly more difficult and slightly easier in a sense so both of them you tell me what you think of this change in the comments and if it even affects you items there were two changes that have happened in this update the first one is the Rikirel cape now the effect used to be bugged if you were far away from the target and didn't have line of sight but still managed to deal damage. The effect would not um, be cast correctly. Now however, it doesn't matter if you're 11 cells or more away and you do have line of sight or not, this has been corrected for. The second one is a cosmetic set that has been updated to include an extra item called Le Plastron. Next one is legendary pets effects. So if you had the pink winkle infused croquette on your pet and you passed next to an ally or multiples, it was meant to heal you. But this effect for some reason was bugged. Now it is completely fixed, all sorted. Next up, we do the classes that have been affected and the two main changes and oh my God, has there been some changes to the Echo Flip and Sadida, the latest classes to be completely revamped and it has been expected. When you make big changes, you don't necessarily get them right from the start. Always expect some tweaks to happen after a big revamp. And look at that, the Sadi and the Echo Flips list are massive, however, because I want to bring to you not only a translation of this content, I want you to be able to know what it means for you or others that these changes have happened and what the impact of them on the gameplay will be. I will skip the Echo Flip and Sadida. But this, whatever I'm doing here, has taught me that from now on, 
whenever something like this happens, I need to get an expert on board to talk to me and explain what the hell has changed and the impact of it on you. I've already got a few people in mind and I've given it a little try with the SAC career today. So let's start with that. So the SAC has only seen two spells change really in effect and these are punishment and blood pact. Where is it? Blood pact increases its vitality by 25% and the other one is uh, punishment which is and has been very controversial for a few weeks now if not months so let me give you some context and this is all brought to you thanks to Nevalon who mains Sacrier if you want to see more he streams right here and he posts videos right here excellent content give him a look so what he explained to me in effect is that the Sacrier has seen big nurse last week and the one before and the one before it and so on and so on. So first nerf that happened a few weeks ago is he lost the ability, the Sakri lost the ability to cast Punishment, which deals a percentage damage in neutral from four cells away without line of sight. So what they've done is they've removed the line of sight. You need it now in order to cast it and it used to cost 3 AP and they've increased it to 4 AP. When I've asked him about this, he actually laughed. He told me that that actually did not reduce the effectiveness of that spell and that he still expected it to be nerfed later on because a tank Sakri who has a lot of HP does not use many AP in his turn. It's literally just about movement and dealing damage whenever the spell cooldowns are up. So what does that mean in essence? What has been happening is Sakris have had a phase of going full tank as in increasing their HP to the maximum using sets like Wrestler so they can manage 8 to 9k HP sometimes and what they do is increase their base HP using Blood Pact which now gives 25% vitality where it used to give 30% vitality so they increase their maximum HP and then use Punishment in order to affect big neutral damage and what do we know about neutral damage in PvP? It is the least statistic that is present in pretty much most builds barring chance ones that can have high neutral resistances But that means a tank Sakri was broken They go full tank loads of HP increase their base HP and every couple of turns just smack one of the characters AoE for one and a half to 2k damage, which was ridiculously broken. So now, coming back to the changes that have happened now, Blood Pact increases less vitality, so 30 to 25% from the last update, and in the current one, it lasts for less turns. So you have less of an ability to play two turns with, uh, to play, to deal two two lots of damage using your increased base HP so you have to think more about when to cast it and when to deal damage definitely a big nerf to the Sakri tank and the second one punishment which as we said used to be able to hit with 3 AP 4 range AoE without line of sight has lost the line of sight recently and has seen the cost increase to 4 now they have reduced the cost back to 3 AP but you can only cast it on yourself. What does this mean? That means you can't hit something from a distance. You have to be a Sakri and get close to things. And when you cast it on yourself, it will deal damage to the four cells around you. Forcing tank Sakris to spend more AP making placement in order to be able to cast their damage. And they have also been relegated to more of a close combat role, which they have always assumed in the past. Moving on. The Forge Lance. I have requested the help of my friend Tura, who mains the least effective class, as I like to call it, uh, to show us this little footage right here, and I'll let it play a role. To summarize, the Forge Lance had a spell that would cast on top of dealing damage, put a state on a target for one turn. That state can now last for two turns. So the Forge Lance has now two new things. One, the ability to cast it on more targets, one every turn. 
And then the second thing is deal more AoE damage with some placement, as you have been able to see in the previous footage. What does this mean for you and PvP generally? PvM, we all know it's easy, you get to mark more enemies, deal more damage, pretty straightforward. But for PvP, I surmise, this is purely my own speculation, the Forge Lance has fallen down to the expense of other classes which became more popular in PvP, namely the Fekka, the Sakri, uh, the Crow has seen a big nerf recently. So in an effort to piggyback on the current pushback meta, they've designed it so that the Forge Lance in the agility route that can also deal pushback damage will become incredibly viable with the ability to mark multiple targets over two turns, to pace itself and deal more damage using the Noah state, which lasts two turns now. Moving on. The Fekka. Oh, the Fekka. One of my favorite classes. It has seen a big revamp, if you remember, uh, alongside the Foganaut. So it has changed a lot over the time. But recently, what they've discovered by looking at their internal statistics is that the Fekka has been used a lot in PvP and it is absolutely broken. It is strong, you can see the effects of it, and they had to do something about it. So we have four changes, three of which I agree with in the PvP context, and one that is completely meaningless and needs to be reviewed. The first one, 100% agree with. The Barrier, which is a spell that is cast by the Fekka that is activated when the turn of the enemy starts, it places a barrier around it, a glyph that surrounds it, and it gravities it. So it sort of forces the, fe the enemy to stay in that area or risk taking a lot of damage by stepping on it. So what would happen is, the Fekka would cost it, the enemy would stay there, and then when it passes its turn, the barrier remains around it and it deals four lines of damage, I'd like to remind you. And then if anybody pushes them into the edge of the barrier, then they would get hit. So it's a lot of damage for 2 AP. Mind you, the change now means you don't cast it every 2 turns, you cast it every 3 turns, which delays this big mechanic out of play, and it's definitely a cooldown that you need to think about before casting. Next one is the Aegis, and this, for those of you who do not know, is a sort of summon that you place with a glyph around it, but if you place it on a character, they intercept damage on your behalf. So this used to be cast with 1680 at level 200. That's the HP that it had. Now it has been reduced so that it's easier to kill overall, given that it already had 25% resistances all. So now it's easier to get rid of. The third change, which is the one I think they should rethink at some point in the future, which is Silbo. This is a recent addition to the Fekka toolkit, its agility, it hits in a cross, so plus shape, without line of sight, and the main idea behind it is to affect movement. It resembles Gust, it resembles Maneuver, it resembles Shiver. So this is a spell that is designed to help the Fekka move things around and deal better damage or protect its allies better. However, it costs 3 AP and you used to be able to use it twice a turn. Now you can only use it once. It's a lot of AP to use for affecting movement with not as much damage as other bigger spells. So I think in my personal opinion, given that you can only use it once per turn, how about reducing the cost to 2 AP or maybe just reducing or increasing the ability to deal damage on it. And the last one, which is... Reinforced protection. The change that has happened now and, uh, and what it means for PVM and PVPers is you no longer have the ability to place two glyphs or one and be on the other side of the map and then cast reinforced protection and deal lines of damage from your glyphs. That has gone. Now the mechanic closely resembles the teleportation mechanic. So if you have a glyph and an enemy is on it and then you teleport onto it, then it casts damage. And when you pass your turn and their starts, they also take damage. So two lines of damage per glyph. Now, reinforced protection will need a similar kind of positioning in order to be cast. So it means you need to be on a glyph in order to cast reinforced protection and cast those extra lines of damage before they also take them again when their turn starts. So this has nerfed PVM Fekka that used to cast glyphs from a distance and then just reinforce protection and the next turn teleport into it, dealing a whopping 8 lines of damage from glyphs in 2 turns. 
plus their other spells of course. So that has been nerfed massively. The Fekka farm has been hit. You will have to make better decisions, get closer, think about your turns, it's less mindless now. In PvP, well it means the Fekka no longer has the luxury to cast damage without being in the area of battle. You have to expose yourself, risk getting damaged, risk getting debuffed in order to be able to use the powerful potential of reinforced protection. So all in all, Fekka has had its effectiveness slightly reduced in PvP and as with every update I suspect they will keep an eye on the numbers and see if the Fekka drops from the most used to the least used and then adjust accordingly. Next one is the Enutroph, and if we manage to locate the spell called Spade of the Ancients, we can see that the max range has decreased to 7, but also you no longer have the ability to play it in a long range setup. Because you can hit without line of sight whenever you place it, they've reduced the effectiveness of it by pushing the Enutroph essentially to get stuck and get closer in order to be able to use that much AoE damage that can push without having direct line of sight on your enemy. Next is the Fogonaut. And now, this will be no surprise whatsoever to anyone who's done PvP 3v3 in recent times. The protection slash support Fogonaut was absolutely broken. It was able to shield, heal, make movement and do a lot with its turn for a very long duration of effect that made it the absolute best class to have in PvP alongside Fekas in recent times. But they've completely decided to do something about it and let's have a look at what they've done. So. I'll let you look at the list right here. You can see Guardian, Batiscaf and Sonar. So what are these spells? So the Guardian, the Batiscaf is the turret that gives shields. The Lifesaver is the turret that gives heals. And Sonar is a spell that affects pushback. So it pushes enemies, deals damage in your best element with every interaction with turrets, makes entities uh, that are invisible visible. What what are they doing here? Essentially, the first change is the first change is the lifesaver. It used to be able to heal a maximum of fifteen percent when you reached level three. What they've done now, essentially, is take off the last third evolution and completely got rid of it by tweaking the numbers all down to so that the maximum of the previous second evolution is the maximum of the new third evolution. Which means the ability to heal overall as a percentage of max HP has been brought down a full peg. The second one is the Batiscaf. When you evo the Batiscaf, you had the ability to select a spell, place it on a single targeted ally called Covering, 1 to 7 range. This ability to shield used to last for 2 turns, so the support Fogonaut used to be able to cast that on an ally and completely forget about them for a while. Now, that shield is for that turn. By the time you get to play your next turn, they've lost it. Even if they still had it, you need to recast it, making the support Fogonaut less effective by having to rethink about its turns, which turret they evo, and which effectiveness they want to make the most of for an even shorter duration now. And the last change, Sonar, now deals more damage overall because of its ability to crit more by 5% but that is to be expected because as you have seen in recent times so because it is a 3 AP spell it costs more to use it can deal a lot more damage but it's no longer an afterthought it's no longer easy to set up your turrets and your turns so that you can cast that 2 AP spell at the end of it and occasion massive damages all in all the steamer support has been reduced a massive amount in order to align it with other classes. It's no longer a no-brainer as far as I can tell from these changes. Next is the IOP. And the first change we see is Blow. The last update or change, we have seen a change in this movement spell in that it now deals agility damage. The tweak they've made to it is very little. It's just inverting the order of things. It used to deal damage and then push. Now pushes and then deals damage. These are minuscule interactions that most of us don't even notice, but if you're playing cutting edge PvP, whether you hit then push or push then hit can have massive implications and I'm thinking of placing an ebony here. If you deal two lines of damage, one line of damage from afar, using blow 
when you're next to the target to bring them close combat to you means you've dealt close combat damage to them and you only need one more hit in order to place your ebony on them. So minuscule interactions that can have big impacts on PvP. Next is Sword of Fate. This is a 4 AP spell that you used to be able to cast without line of sight and in a shorter range. What they've changed about it is very subtle. You need line of sight but you can cast it in front of you all the way to 6. So the area where you can cast it has grown, but now you need line of sight. But because of its ability to deal big damage in 2 turns, that means now you have to think twice before casting it and you need to take greater risks in order to be able to place a spell that has relatively low AP cost with a lot of payback later on. No longer able to hide IOPS. Let's go. <laughs> and I've left my favorite for last, which is the Panda. Now, the Panda has two main changes that happen to it. The first one is just a corrective of a bug that was affecting some people. And the second one is a spell that used to bother another set of people, but was largely unnoticed. I would say these changes to the Panda are quality of life. They've noticed minuscule things and changed them. So, the first one is, if you had a barrel in the map and you wanted to summon the Wasta, sometimes it just wouldn't let you. Not that you couldn't or didn't have the AP or line of sight or whatever re was required to cast it. No, it just would not let you cast it. So that has been fixed. If you have a barrel, you no longer abnormally cannot play the other spell, which is the Wasta. PvP people will love this because the two summons are vital to their gameplay in PvP. The second one is a lot more subtle and I don't know that many people have noticed it but at the international pub on the general chat we've had a fair bit of moaning about it just this morning and it is brewing. Now how does this spell work first of all? It has two interactions much like most of the pandas spell kit. If you're in the sober state you can cast it on enemies and it would vaughn them meaning they would sustain 10% more damage. If you go drunk however it has a different kind of effect, it gravities. Now because the gravity state is useful to the panda itself to stop itself from getting teleported and moved around at times, it had a minimum cast of zero. But if you're in the sober state, it is useless to be able to cast a vulnerability spell on yourself, which means sometimes pandas used to waste AP if you didn't notice that you were in the sober state, you would cast it on yourself effectively wasting 2 AP and then having to go drunk, apply it on yourself in order to be gravitated. What has happened now is a minor change that will save a lot of people a lot of heartache. <laughs> and I will just reiterate this because this is my first time covering a change log. I'm not an expert in the Sadi or the Fekka. I do not know these classes, I've never played them in recent times and I don't want to just translate word for word because there is absolutely no value. But as I said, I will keep it in mind and for the next time anything remotely close to this happens, I will do my absolute best to have an expert sat next to me or in voice chat to explain it thoroughly to me so that I can pass it on to you later on. Or even have them do the explanation because I'm sure they will do a better job of it than I will. Right, thank you very much for watching, catch you on the next one, peace.